Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today, let's go over a set of book selling questions. Um, I'll give my answers and I'll list the questions and, and it'll be interested to see what your response is. Kind of like an, a versus, an A versus B scenarios in book selling and see what, what you would prefer. And I'd be interested to see how it compares to what, what I think. So, um, hey, I appreciate the views. Um, hey, we're, we're closing in on a thousand subscribers. I can't believe that. You know, I've been doing this this year and slowly gaining up. So I appreciate the channel support and people that are subscribing. And um, hey, if you find this useful or interesting and you look at the other stuff, I appreciate the likes and, and subscribe. We'll keep doing this and see what happens. So um, with that, let's just jump right in. So did you ever, if you ever watched the old America's Funniest Videos, the AFE stuff, you know, they would do verses, you know, it'd be like kids wearing cowboy hats versus boxing kangaroos, you know, and do the videos. And uh, we always, we always enjoyed those, always kind of crazy, right? So here, here are some, some examples of things that I get asked a lot on the channel and, and there's little tidbits of information in here and let's, let's just go through it. So for a bookseller, what would you rather sell? Hardbacks or paperbacks? The verses, hardbacks versus paperbacks or soft cover books in book selling. All right, so for me, I sell predominantly hardbacks. Uh, the reality is, is I prefer hardbacks. I think they're, you, paperbacks are too easy, to, too hard to go through. Um, they're often jumbled where hardbacks in my stores are often sorted. I think there's greater value in hardbacks. Um, I think, you know, I buy paperbacks. If I see paperbacks, absolutely, I'm going to buy it. But if I have a preference, hardback versus paperback, I'm going to go with hardback. So let's go to the next one. Um, fiction versus nonfiction. Easy one for me. I believe that nonfiction is where your money is. You can, again, if the thrift store or the bookstore gives me a good fiction book, I'll do it. Uh, and I, I sell fiction books, but probably 90 or 95% of what I sell are nonfiction. They're nonfiction genres. You know, history, genealogy, sports, uh, nature, you know, some t textbook type things. To me, nonfiction and nonfiction hardback is the way to go in book selling. That's where your big money is. Uh, let's, let's see what the next verse is. I've got me a cheat sheet here. Um, all right. Free shipping or no free shipping on your listings? This is predominantly, you know, for say an eBay type thing, but I guess it can go for an Amazon too. You know, it's included. I, I you know, if you select like prime shipping, I think it's a no brainer on that. Uh, people love prime shipping. If you charge shipping, it probably kills you on Amazon. I'm not an Amazon seller, but I'm an Amazon buyer and I am thinking about going to Amazon, but um, even on eBay, on eBay, it's actually the opposite for me. I believe on eBay, I do not believe in free shipping on eBay. I charge you typically a $4 flat rate on books and that puts it in a box, packed nice, doesn't 100% cover my shipping costs with you know postal rates and supplies going up, but for most books, you know, my shipping, postal shipping is like 330 or 380 plus my shipping supplies. That cost has gone up to 60 or 70 cents, you know, total for tape, boxes, packing material, everything. So I'm probably in general in that four to five dollar range on shipping cost. I believe a four dollar shipping is reasonable. It's in line with what Amazon does charge on some things, 399. I, on eBay, I am not a proponent of free shipping. I don't see that it moves my sales if I do free shipping. I see it just cutting into my profit. So I pretty much go no, very, very seldom do I do free shipping. Um, the next thing, just continue on shipping. Boxes or padded mailers? You know, the bubble wrap or the craft paper with the bubble in the padded mailers. I, which do you prefer? Boxes versus mailers, uh, paper mailers. Uh, I'm in the firm box camp. You know, you have a great product, you sold it, it you do everything. Anytime I've had something damaged, it's been because I've sent it in a craft paper, you know, even though it's got the little bubble wrap inside, it gets cut by a sorting machine or damaged. I appreciate it when I get things that are, that are shipped more in a rigid box. I have been going to um, what they call the multi-fold boxes, you know, so it's not a standard box like you would think of, but it's the one that has the multi-folds and I can wrap the book and I'll, I'll show that at some point, but I typically use three, the multi-folds I'll use in a, um, something like a 12 by nine by one inch. Um, I have some 12 by 12s or 12 and a half by 12 and a half that go to one to two inch on multi-folds. Then on standard boxes, I typically 
I use two boxes for probably 90% of my stuff. A um, 10 by 8 by 3 and a 12 by 9 by 3. Those, those work good for me. I'm firmly in the box camp. All right, next. Um, auction, again for eBay, auction format or fixed, uh, fixed price format versus which one? I'm firmly in the fixed price format. I believe for books, at least the books I sell, I don't have a million people clamoring for these. It's not like some, some, you know, earbuds or something, you know, some iPhone accessories. You know, I sell things that there literally may be a half a dozen people in the world that are interested in a book that some obscure book auction format's not going to work for me. It's what I've found very, every once in a while, I'll throw something out on an auction format to see what happens. But I'm in general for book selling. I am firmly in the fixed, fixed price listing format for eBay. All right, um, here's one uh, for your sourcing. Do you prefer thrift stores or estate sales? Um, it's a, this is a toss up and I guess you could say, why do I have to, to, to pick one over the other? We like them both and of course we do, but this is versus. So I would say for me, if I had to pick, I would pick thrift stores. And the reason is, is that they're always there. They're always replenishing their stock. Uh, the great thing about an estate sale is if I go to an estate sale and I get a big score, I can get a lot of books at once. But often the estate sales are in the middle of the week and I do books as a, you know, as a side gig. So it's hard for me to make that first day where thrift stores I can kind of do on my schedule that it is a rotating stock. So I like them both, but if I had to pick, it would just be a thrift store. So then let's follow that up thrift store or my library bookstore. And hands down, I'd have to go to my library bookstore because I have a great library bookstore. Lots of stock gets turned over, lots of selection. I'm pulling stuff out of there all the time with good prices. So library bookstore for me is my best, my favorite, because it is my best. And then thrift stores would be next and then estate sales, although I love them all, right? Um, how about, um, what's the hardest thing for you in book selling? Is it listing or is it shipping? Everybody, I think most people like sourcing because it's the fun, right? It's the treasure hunt. But then when it gets down to the work, the work you have to do to be successful. And that is a point. If, if you're book selling, it's not all about the sourcing. The sourcing is the fun stuff for most people. That's where they get the little endorphin hit. That's where they, you know, they get, it's the treasure hunt mentality. But to be successful at book selling, you have to list. Remember, if you don't list it, you can't sell it. You have to take your photos, you have to do all that stuff, and then you have to ship promptly and wrap all that stuff up. So for me, I, I find shipping to be more arduous. Uh, just because of the time to you know, pack it up. And I think that's one reason I'm, I'm seriously considering in 2022 trying out Amazon because I'm thinking the FBA where I just ship things to Amazon and then let them take care of it might help me on my inventory space as well as just, you know, not having to worry about it. Ship to Amazon. I know you pay for it, but you know, it's whatever. You pay for something anyway, right? You pay, pay fees wherever. I'm not, if you're making good money, who cares about the fees? Obviously, we want lower fees, but... If we're paying more fees, that means that we're, we're selling more stuff. So I don't really get wrapped around the axle on that, even though obviously I like to have the less fees as possible. But um, for me, shipping is, is a more arduous than listing. Although sometimes when you see my backlog of what there is to list, clearly I'm failing at that sometimes too. So anyway, all right. So, um, okay, how about when you're sourcing and you're, you get that, tr the tr let's go back to the treasure hunt. All right, when you find something, at least like I do, when I find something of value or I find a really cool book, you get that rush, right? Um, it's part of the fun of the game. But you get another little hit when you sell. So what about you? Do you get more when you find it originally or when you turn it over quick and you sell it and you, ma and you make the score? Which one gives you the, the best bang for your buck? Which one gets you that best, you know, whatever that dopamine hit or whatever it is? Um, for me, it's finding it in the wild. I, that's that's that is the treasure hunt, and I do get I do get another um, you know bit of excitement. I like it when it sells. That's nice too. So, um, and then finally, I guess something for you guys uh, for for viewers. Um, what do you prefer? What I mean, people, Amazon or eBay versus which one's the best selling platform? And it probably depends on where you started. For me, I have to say it's eBay because that's what I do. But I, I'm working on, you know, making that jump and trying to have two sales channels, which I think is important, right? 
just like we like to source we've had videos on this you got to you can control the stuff in the middle but you know you you want to diversify your sourcing and your sales channels and more than eBay and Amazon that you could do Macari you could do Etsy there are other ways to sell Facebook marketplace lots of people sell at flea markets some I've had one viewer that said they even have sold off their front porch so there's all kinds of ways to do it so for you versus Amazon or eBay which one's the best uh, for me it's eBay because that's where I'm at so anyway lots of food for thought unpack that I'll try to pin those questions and I'll be interested to see as a community as a viewership what where everybody lands on this on the verses so and there may be some other things that I left out but I thought it was just a um, you know kind of a interesting topic to just mental exercise to think about so hope you enjoyed it, it gives you something to think about and if you're a new bookseller it, the, it this touches on topics that I've got videos out there on but it touches on all these little topics that you should think about you should do so anyway have a good day good sourcing uh, list it sell it have fun